Hey guys, Kevin the Toy Smoker here. Got a little update for you. I got a couple meals from the last video. I want to show you guys what I've done with them. Not completely done with both. I got but I got one completely done. And I made some changes once again to the studio. The last time I just done some really good hard cleanup. We had some family coming in from out of town and stuff. And uh, it, a good friend of mine, we David Chandler, we went to the uh, battlegrounds and stuff like that and went digging. You know, oh, it's so much fun. So i done a really good cleanup job, but when I was doing the cleanup job, I thought, you know, it's time to move things around. I've been in this studio now for a little bit over a year, and I, you know, I finally got a, getting a feel for the workflow. What, th what am I using all the time? What things are I'm not using or very little? So that kind of depicts when you're working with different spaces and, you know, you don't, space is always an issue. At only one time I had a studio where space was just infinite, but it's still, it, but it's still, even with that, there, there's problems with having that. It's called heating and air conditioning. It's hard to keep things climate controlled when you have 10,000 square foot. But here, I got great climate control. But, you know, I'm looking at, I have total, basically what you have is three rooms here. Uh, a YouTuber by the name of Kevin Mitchell, he, uh, let me make sure I read this properly. He actually sent a question on the last video. He said, is your collecting room through the white door? You know, which was I was in the office at the time. So what I was going to do real quick before I get to the Amigos and stuff, I was going to, uh, I got my extra extension cord on here so I can kind of take you guys on a quick spin around, kind of show you the, the weird flow I got because everything wraps into a big circle, which I love that. When I first walked into this place, when we was looking at uh, getting it, it is like, boom, I walked through the footprint and it just spoke to me. I was like, man, I can see and feel the possibilities here. So, so what I'm going to do is kind of spin the camera around here. And then obviously we are in the toy room. I'm going to try to make sure I don't capture the, because these cameras do not like looking into themselves. So I'm going to spin it around here a little bit. Got a new G.I. Joe shelf, finally. All right, there's the TV. I'm going to go a little bit lower here so it don't capture itself. But what I done was, is took my desk that you guys normally see me doing sculpting and stuff on. I made it to where that my four-year-old daughter can come in here. Yep, and that's the Migos we're going to be talking about today. And I made it to where she's got some supplies here, you know kid-friendly supplies, and she uh, has paper and stuff over here that she can reach, and then she can come over here and sit and draw and watch YouTube and stuff. So that was the big uh, reasoning on how I was trying to figure out the layout here. So boom, which led to getting rid of this, that big, huge armoire that I had in here. I did Well, I repurposed it, and you'll, you'll, you'll be seeing that in just a minute. But I got uh, my finally got me a G. I had my G.I. Joe's boxed up for over two years now. And it's been driving me insane. So finally getting these guys out. But all right, this door right here, this is goes to my laundry slash storage room that I have really good storage in there. Plus, I have my own private bathroom and sink. So great that I have my own private sink because, of course, I'm an artist. I tend to make a mess. So, so that door leads in the one way that goes into the circle. So, kind of show. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to make sure I'm not getting tangled up here. But So, I went through here. I was able to clean up this area. I threw away a lot of old junk. And now, I have the painting desk, which is the one that turns up on, you know, it can go almost a 90 degree angle. So now I got it where it was sitting over here, kind of almost in the middle of the floor, taking up a lot of space. And the reason it takes up space is the base of it. So now I have it set up here with my uh, oil painting supplies in a rolly cart. So now I got access to them and I got this cool ladder thing here step ladder because i got 10 foot ceilings in here as you can see awesome ceilings and of course the closet goes all the way up too but yeah i got this right here on a rolly thing and it has everything that i need for oil painting we're talking about I got tons of brushes here 
uh, all my small oil paints and stuff like that. Then I got another storage and then other big tubes of tank, uh, paint and stuff like that down there. So it works really well on using this much. So now it's kind of out of the way. And I actually got it now where you can actually see out through the window for once. <laughs> I kept it black all the time in here. So, but now I got, I'm letting a little sunlight come in. But now we're sitting there. I didn't do much to this area. The biggest change over I did is the dead center of this area here where I had the Death Star. So now I have a lot of my art supply storage, uh, two big black crates full of vintage, uh, not vintage, but uh, legacy and vintage figures in here, uh, vital paperwork, and also uh, yeah, other vital paperwork, stuff that I uh, usually got going on all the time, like stickers and stuff like that. And I got my Jabba's Palace. So I was hoping this would work out for you guys. Aaron Campbell, hey brother, thank you very much. I finally got it uh, where I can uh, showcase you guys a little bit. So I'm trying to go here and see what we can see in the dark here. Yep, there he is, hiding in the background. Now I'm looking at restoring all this, put all the figures in it. I got the Han Solo back in there. I'll be able to try to get you guys a shot of that. But the biggest new addition is these two big shelves right here. And I can take one shelf at a time here. I had a hard time finding shelves, but, you know, it's like everybody that's, you know, it's, it's getting close. It's the holidays, really. And now everybody's, you know, remodeling and everything like I am. And boom, I, had an extremely hard time. Home Depot was completely wiped out of medium and small shelves. They had tons of large ones, the super size ones. These, they had these big uh, off white ones here. They had like 30 of them, but none this size. So I had to go to Lowe's and pick up these. Let me give you guys a cool shot of this right here. Got Mando back there. And this is where I ended up moving the uh, Death Star. Got it moved over here. And finally, you guys get to see this a little bit better. And this is another good reason why I was glad to do this. This is a true scale, three and three quarter inch uh, Millennium Falcon common room. This is the place where, you know, the Chewbacca played chess, as you can see in there. So I'm actually now, this is where I can just turn around, grab it and pull it out and work on it and when i'm done it can jump right back up here up top out of the way so that was one of the reasons why i was really wanting it accessible before i had it buried in a shelf got some indiana jones stuff going here and then down here i got my conans and some extra storage cases and stuff and over here like i said i got all my other uh, art supplies easy to reach stuff the stuff that i use most of the time so that's what i try to keep handy and like i said i got paper for my little girl and like i said just trying to keep things accessible and like i said now we're going to try to take this camera there is the white door once is the grinch that's thanks to my wife she got that crazy sign for me that's the door to my office so i always tell you guys i get there's four rooms that go in a circle so this is Actually, room number two. Room number one is this room right here. This is the entrance to the house, but it is the oil painting room. This is where I do a lot of my oil paintings if I'm not in there. That way I can have two projects going on at the same time. I got uh, my airbrush set up. And like I said, there's the armoire that I had. Instead of taking it and just getting rid of it, I repurposed it. And the, the biggest deal that I was going for here was having all these crazy art supplies, like all my paints. But yet, you know, you can shut the door and it looks a lot nice and neater and stuff like that. So that's been the goal for this year. I'm trying to get on the other side of this cord here. So... Got the airbrush station, which it goes into the kitchen. I got the some cool little Star Wars up top. 
got me a little gallery wall here that I showcase things on. So when you, as soon as you step in my house, boom, you are getting artwork and Star Wars shoved down your throat. So loads of fun. So, and here is, we uh, take a quick check here, guys, and see if anybody's seen anything. Ah, uh, yes. Rob Brown, Kevin's man cave. That's right, brother. Good to see you, Rob. Man, you got to come over, brother. We got to have an art session one afternoon. Ah, uh, thank you so much on the creature from the Black Lagoon. Yeah, he, that's still a work in progress right here. I got, got, that's pretty much the underpainting. So guys, then you come in here and this is the office where you, I typically are just hanging out in here. Uh, this is where I have meetings. And of course, this is where I've been. I, I call it the, the office slash Mego room. As you can see, there's Migos everywhere. And then uh, I got the big boys over there on top. You got King Kong, uh, Godzilla, and the Kraken. And here is the new shelf that I've got. Because uh, that the old shelf that was in this corner is the shelf that where you see now all my G.I. Joes reside on. So, guys, I'm about at the end of my court here, so I'm still trying to give you the best shot and everything. And there is the actual uh, hand drawing of the Thrawn painting that you see on my other canvas. And uh, and the other Mego that I was wanting to talk to you guys about, I actually, while I was sitting here talking to you guys, I seen that I, I grabbed the wrong one so i'm gonna make sure i grab the correct one here trying to get in a hurry to get ready so we'll get a bigger close-up to that and and uh, the, do the full circle and that door back there is the other door which leads you to the uh storage area laundry uh restroom so that's how it is guys from right here you can do a, a whole 360 all the way around which adds for an amazing flow for an artist because you never know where I'm going to be at and what I'm going to do. And sometimes if you have a paint can or paint going everywhere or you accidentally stab yourself with an X-Acto knife, you need easy access to get to the sink. <laughs> so so that's what I got going on. And that, let me make sure I turn here where... We got good lighting, so you guys can see. There we go. That's a little bit better lighting. And, uh, guys, on the last episode, I told you I had all the parts for the uh, Buffalo Bill. So, because he came with, the Sitting Bull guy came with the jacket, the boots, and the belt. So, here is my repo version of him. I'm extremely pleased with this. I only got roughly $9 invested in this guy. I had to get the uh, the long rifle, uh, these pants, the pants I still got to put, the go trim, which I have the go trim. So I got them off of another project. Oops, he dropped his gun. So, but everything for a, a repo figure, like I said, under $10, I couldn't be any more ecstatic about it. Because like I said, if you've got an original one of these guys that wouldn't look much different from this, you're looking at $125, $150. That's how... They're hard to find, and they're hard to find in great shape. So, so this is for me the next best possible thing. Uh, and bottom line, at the end of the day, guys, it's all about enjoying your collection, enjoying your space. I wanted this place good and clean. That when I'm getting in here, like I said, 4 a.m. A lot of times I'm coming in here to try to get a couple hours worth of work in before I go to work. It's got to be inspiring. I mean, it's it's got to lift me up. I got to walk in here and get invigorated to, to, to go from A to Z real fast, and you know, to get them creative juices flowing. So, boom, it's got to have. It's got. If I see clutter and mess, I'm just like, ah, work. And time you clean up a mess to get so you can work something. Boom, you done killed an hour and stuff. So, but like I said, I had two figure two figures over here. I'm gonna show you the one here. I got the sitting bull. The only thing that I need left to do to him is restring him. He has the original 1974 uh, string in him. And so you can imagine he's loose as a goose. So and I got the reproduction hat here. So got him looking really nice. You guys can see here. Make sure he gets focused in. 
there we go and look at that nice uh thank you uh paul dr migo for these amazing uh moccasins man they've really uh I ended up, I bought four the last time I got these. I, I, just, I just had a feeling that I might need a, an extra pair. And so I had two figures that needed it. And so and I ended up using another pair on a, 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 a on the uh, on an extra figure. And boom, I had this extra pair here. Boom, Sitting Bull needed a pair. It just worked out perfectly. And, and they're, gosh, the quality of these and the price is amazing. So definitely... Guys, you need to go see Paul at Dr. Migos. I mean, just amazing quality stuff. You just can't beat it. So, and the other thing I was going to show you that I got. You guys, everybody, if you watch my channel, y'all know I'm a huge Johnny Quest fan. But I'm, I'm not a big fan of the figures that have been coming out on it. But I still wanted, I got the original Johnny Quest. I did not like the Haji. And I showed you guys how I made my own Haji. So now I'm in the process. I got a uh, uh, race banning here. The parts where I'm gonna make race banning. And Doctor Quest, I actually got the parts to him in there. So I got a nice red long sleeve shirt. Got the really nice S bodies going on here. So I'm gonna back up a little bit, guys. See if I can get a little bit better light for you guys. I think this would be just a little bit better here. Let's see here. Yes, it is. Let me just tilt the camera just a hair. Sorry, guys. Just trying to make sure you guys can see this a little bit better. Yeah, yeah, much better. So I got a really nice S body here. And I'll probably show you the sitting bull one more time. Really cool race band and red shirt. Set these down. And what I am using for the race band is, if you go to the, where the S body, you can find S bodies is the white haired uh s head i think which is this perfect you know it's not perfect to race banding but i think it really it's close enough that does the the silhouette justice so i got that got a really nice uh tuxedo gray pants and then i got him these military boots that are made especially for well, they're almost military. They're more like infantry kind of boots. Uh, see if I can get these to show for the... Oh, Aaron, I want to take these out of the plastic, guys. This uh, plastic's kind of... It's not a perfectly clear plastic. But I want to show these boots off because they look... They're highly detailed. I give them credit on this. So... Come on, focus in there. Now it should focus in. They got a really nice boot here. Perfect. Should work out great for race band and good color. Almost looks identical to the version of it in the cartoon. So I'm going to be putting that together. And like I said, I have, uh, I'll probably on the next video, I'll pull out what I've done for to make the, the Benton Quest figure. And, uh, and like I said, I got creative with it. And that's the cool thing about this is, is you kind of got to think out of the box, do a little shopping, look and see what's all out there. And, and what I did on that one was there was another figure that you could purchase. I think he was a, it's called the artist. No, no, he was just a regular scientist and he come with a white coat, which I needed a white coat for my uh, vintage lizard that went with Spider-Man. So I took the white coat off it, bought a green lab coat for uh, Bitten Quest, boom. There you go. I, I got a figure with the body, full set of clothes. Uh, for ten dollars and it came with the lab coat that i needed for that the the lab coat if i bought it separately i think was like five i'm pretty sure it's six dollars so that made i got a body and a full set of clothes for four bucks you can't beat that so that's the you kind of you got to be a little smart uh on how you do these things because if you're you guys are probably like me you're you're huge collectors and this hobby gets extremely expensive and you have to unfortunately sometimes well this month i only can afford this hey i'm in the same boat some days and so being smart on your shopping and really looking to see what all the different parts you have to offer 
So I always say, look for the bodies that are already completely pre-clothed because you can get a great deal on, even though you don't need all the pieces, but you can use those pieces down the line. And that's the cheaper way to get something versus if you buy it piece by piece. It's like anything else, rule of thumb in the toy collecting as it is, buy in bulk. So if you can buy a complete figure, your better chance that you're going to get all the pieces cheaper in the long run. So, yeah, Johnny Quest is one of the, the greatest, to me, it's one of the greatest cartoons ever, ever, if not the greatest cartoon. I mean, it, uh, Thundar the Barbarian was one of my extreme favorites as far as fantasy. I think Thundar and Flash Gordon was right there neck and neck on the whole sci-fi fantasy realm. And as far as realistic, Boom, Johnny Quest was it. Because Johnny Quest, it had a certain realism, and then it had some high sci-fi tech in it, but it all came from things that were plausible. And I think that's what made it interesting. Well, that was what made it exciting, but what made it interesting was all the globe trotting they did, going to Africa, Singapore, and all the crazy, and Antarctica and stuff like that, going to all those exotic places locations and using all this new high-tech science gadget you take that combination then you got this uh, really neat family dynamic of this family who don't live normally they're always going on these huge adventures so i mean and getting in trouble with you know international bad guys and terrorists so i mean the man we really need a cartoon like that today <laughs> i tell you they need to redo johnny quest and just go by the old uh, rule book that they started with and just keep it simple and do great stories. Don't have to, don't need, don't need to be overkill to play it smart. And I, and I, so, I mean, so that, that, that whole uh, concept story wise has just been an, uh, an exciting thing. That's why I would love to have some figures to show it off. So, and stuff like that. Let's see here. Thundar. Yeah, Rob. I mean, yeah, you, it's hard not to love Thundar. And I thought about guys, uh, Throw me your vote in here if you think this sounds like a great idea. I always thought doing a eight inch retro line for Thundar and Ariel and Oogla, I think it'd be amazing. I really do. Let's see, Let's see, have you watched a uh, three part Johnny Quest? Oh, how let's see, how many times have I watched the three part documentary? <laughs> That'd be probably the, the, the tougher question because I guarantee you. Easily, I have watched it a dozen times, if not 15 or more. I mean, it's it's just one of those uh, documentaries that if you're into comic artwork, Doug Wildly was one of the greatest ca cartoon artists and comic book artists of all time. Yeah, you know, Rob, Rob's on here. Rob can uh, agree to that. Doug Wildly was just amazing. And, and then that's what made that cartoon so great is you had someone who was in – the comic book industry, who not only was a great artist, but he was a great storyteller. And that's what is sorely lacking in comics and cartoons today is that creative writing along with that traditional uh, school of art that we're just totally missing out. Today, it's just about fast and cheap, fast and cheap. No matter what it looks like, does it digital fast and cheap? And I think I'm not knocking digital. I think digital has its place. Digital has certain tools to make things quicker. So the, my thing is with traditional artwork mixed with digital assets, there's no reason today why we shouldn't have amazing cartoons like Johnny Quest uh, in, in comics today. Because if you mix those two tools together, I think there's no reason why we shouldn't come out with better cartoons and better stories today. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, once once he left, guys, how many times have y'all heard me say this? He-Man. Once they got rid of that first creative team, when they left and they took it to the B team, it went downhill. G.I. Joe. Once they pushed Larry Hall and everybody else to the side, it went down the tube. I just don't understand where these toy companies and cartoon companies think that they can... The team that's kicking it out of the park, why do you want to not pay them top dollar to keep producing an amazing product and go to your B team? Yes, you are saving money. But if it keep, keep if it 
send your product down the path of where it's going to be coming to the end way quicker than what it should. Where did you save money? Uh, I'm just saying, where did you save the money? I mean, I mean, it's too many uh, great shows and cartoons have been killed that way. Andrew Clay, Clay Creations. Oh, awesome. Uh, we got a fellow sculptor just come in here. Awesome. Oh, thank you very much. And I'm glad to see another sculptor come on here, man. Uh, definitely uh, pop in here. Throw in your two cents, man, because, I mean, I love to hear other sculptors. And, and I definitely, uh, please comment back with your link, because I definitely want to come check out your stuff. I mean, because I, I, other artists inspire me. I mean, bottom line, that's it. That's what we need to be doing for each, each other. Alpha Tryon, how you doing, brother? Let's see. Let's see. Uh, is Smith Lords going to give the remaining 12 figures? Uh, I have no clue. I, I do not uh, know anything about what Smith Lords are doing as far as their figures and stuff. I'm not kept up with it. And uh, and Chris, he's not told me any kind of information like that. So, I mean, best thing there is go to uh, probably... Uh, uh, Stan, not Stan Solo, but uh, yeah, Smith Lords is now. Yeah, I, I, sorry, I'm getting all confused there, that, all that stuff. But uh, not that I know of, Chris Cron. The best thing I can do is is go to the fan strike back, and I, I think there's a message board there you can ask questions on. So I, honestly, I I do not know. I mean, if I did, I'd, I'd definitely tell you guys, but I honestly cannot answer that. So I'm not. Like I said, I don't keep up with too much on what they're doing. Or even a stand solo. I do, I'm not in the mix on what's. I don't even know what's coming out next. <laughs> so, I mean, if I'm not involved with it, I generally don't know what what else is going on. I, I have a hard enough time keeping up with my own stuff. No less keeping up because I mean, both of those companies are really pumping out the products. Bantha is getting worked on, guys. Can I give two thumbs up, people? Everybody said the Bantha wouldn't make it. The Bantha made it across the finish line, so I'm hoping sometime, maybe around spring or so, early summer, we'll be having some Banthas in our hands. So, man, so it's that is an amazing thing, monkey off my back. I'm so, so glad that that thing's finally went into production. So, so, uh, but yeah, guys, like I said, I wish I can give you more info on that kind of stuff, but as soon as I know anything, uh, I will definitely keep you guys up to breath, but just uh, make sure you keep up with both of those companies. They're, they're both great companies doing great things. Like I said, I wish both of them luck and on everything that they do. I mean, so, I mean, uh, Chris Cron and, and Chris Smith, both Chris Smith is, you know, always, you know, the outstanding uh, lineage of cr creating amazing vintage figures, and it don't look like he's going to slow down anytime soon. So two thumbs up for him. Like I said, I love all the stuff he's got coming out. And like I said, and of course, I, I support the fan strike back as well. we got the Bantha coming out soon. So hopefully some more products uh, coming into next year as well. So this is a lot of exciting things going on. Let's see if we've got some more pop up here. Oh, thank you very much, Aaron. Like I said, the Bantha, it, who is? It, it was a toughie, but like I said, it, we, we brought it home, and that's what it matters. Let's see here. Oh, you see me on retro blasting. Well, I will give you. I'm glad you mentioned retro blasting. Uh, I, I will tell you guys this: when the first set of banthas come in in the in the retro boxes, uh, the the first official unboxing, I will be going to Michael's down here uh, on retro blasting, and the first official unboxing will be done on his show. I done talked to Michael, done talked to Chris, and that's all been approved. We're just so when uh, so when the first set of banthas come in, uh, and uh, and actually uh, Michael then said he has a empty place or the the place where the Jabba's the uh, the dungeon the one of the dungeon sets I think he said he has both uh, both there's two sets of those the one he's taken out and that he's got a that's where the bantha is going to be living from now on so once we get it unboxed so I, that's what Michael personally told me. So I'm completely flattered for that, that you know, that, that my figure is going to be up there with the vintage collection of his. So, I mean, that is really cool. So excited about that. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I, that's why I told you guys a, a few, uh, what was it, a little over two months ago when I said we hit the, the finish line and I said, 
we're only going to go a couple months. And I didn't know what that exact date was. I mean, I was probably being generous when I said two months. Because, I mean, everybody wants this to go in production. But we gave everybody the last chance to hop on there. And like I said, if you missed it now, unfortunately, I think the secondary market, just like anything else, Star Wars, we all know the secondary market is just evil. I mean, it is. it don't matter if it's a any... Star, any, if it's, it's Star Wars secondary market, uh, you better get ready to, to pay out. I mean, already I see people like, a, not even, we're talking about a Motu here. The Snake Mountain is already, uh, somebody's trying to resell it for, I think, I seen one already for like $1,200. Uh, the sales bars, I've seen those $1,400. I mean, it's just crazy. I mean, I wasn't going to pay 600 for a sales barge. No less fourteen hundred. Not going to do it. I mean, just like I said with the razor, I like the razor crest. Three fifty is not a bad price, but I think uh, Alpha. I think you were the one, or you or Keith one. I can't remember was on here the last time. One of you guys said, I think it's you, Alpha. I could be wrong. Said that time you pay the taxes and do the shipping fees and all that is it's pushing more like four and a quarter when it's all said and done. So I'm like. Is it nice? Yes. I'm not knocking the product, but $425 is a lot of money no matter who you are. And then you have to find somewhere that's almost, you're going to have to hang it from the ceiling. I mean, that's where I'm at now. If I got the Razor Crest, it, was, it would have to be big, huge hooks and metal wire and it'd be hung up on the ceiling because I have no more big real estate. So it's, so it's getting in, it's getting interesting in here. <laughs> so, so unfortunately for that, Blue Harvest. Hey, brother, glad you guys come on here. Awesome. But yeah, that's the big. You know, that's another thing with us toy collectors, guys. We're always it's real estate. And what makes I got a lot of great space. That's not the problem. It's the problem I have here is I'm also a professional artist. So I have a lot of space being taken up with office area and workspace so in you know and i have a whole half of a room here this is is dedicated to painting and airbrushing and, and i got so i mean if i took all the artistry away from my areas i could probably double my collection but i can't do that uh but i was an artist before i was a toy collector so i mean I actually i started doing artwork about the same time i got my First ever Planet of the Apes Migos figure. So that came about about the same time. So, uh, yeah, because I think those figures came out 74. And I started painting in 1975. So, boom. Time I started getting Mego Apes and Batman, you know, pre-Star Wars, of course, you know. So I, I was already hooked on art, and I've never looked back since. So, I mean, that's always been the interesting thing is like i said is boom i gotta work because uh, a lot of the artwork the money that i make off it goes to fund me my collection and so and i have to have work areas to where i can do restoration so not only am i doing artwork i'm doing restoration and i got my office stuff i'm working on a tv show right now i'm working on the pilot of it doing that and then boom i'm a toy collector and then i'm pretty serious toy collector i got a Pretty decent collection here. Nothing to brag about, but I got a decent little collection over the years. But I've been collecting toys, and I got... Oh, guys, I'm going to be doing a video soon. Uh, it's going to be one that I'm going to have to edit and put it together and show you guys. Is I found from 1996, I found an old VHS of my very first toy room. This was before I knew anybody else had toy rooms. I didn't know that was even a thing back in those days. And I know I wasn't the only one now, but back in the day, I I didn't know anybody else that had that. So I remember uh, professional wrestlers and other friends of mine, they would come from Chattanooga all the way down just to come see my toy room. And, and looking at it back now, it was nothing impressive, but they would just ooh and ah over it. So, so one day what I'm going to do is, is, like I said, believe it or not, I'm sitting there running the camera and I don't say a word. What the hell? I would have never do that with a camera and not run my big mouth. So the big, that's so that's a huge difference in the person I am now versus who I was back in 97, which is 
how many years ago? That's God, that's 23 years ago. So, so I had my first toy room, a whole entire room dedicated to toys. I mean, everywhere. I mean, the, the, the wallpaper was toys. So, so I finally, you know, so that's 23 years I've been doing this now. So it's just been, you know, it, it's good to look back and I'm glad that I finally got that burned on the DVD and I got it going to be put it on my computer and, and sharing that with you guys. Like I said, it's cool to look at. And if it's also on my end, looking at the setup I have now versus 23 years ago, I'm very thankful to where I'm at and where I've came. And back then, if you would have asked me if I would ever be putting videos up onto the computer, I that would, have, that was not even a thought back in those days. So Oh, you pass on the Razor Crest too. I said I understand that four hundred dollars. That's honestly, I think when you get over, let me see here. Honestly, let's get realistically, guys. When you start knocking on the two hundred dollar marker, it's getting serious. And I mean, and I can't think of too many things. I mean, I paid. Back in 2011, 40 bucks for a mint Castle Gray School. And I think they're going for $250, $300 right now. Ain't no way I'd pay $250 for a Castle Gray School. Not going to do it. <laughs> so, Rob. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I don't want to hear you talk because I feel pretty old myself. <laughs> I just uh filming a pilot for this show. It's it's a fitness show, and I, I had to get out there and uh, had this trainer put me through the ringers. Yeah, I felt my age really quick. So yeah, it's yeah times creeping up on us, but you know we got it. And this to me, I think you know because I still feel like I got a 25 year old head. I feel like I got a lot of creativity left in me. I feel like I got a lot of injury now. Do I does does the body ache and hurt like him? Oh yeah, it does. But still. I think being surrounded like around this kind of stuff and being engaged with other interesting, cool people as you're all selves, I think this is what keeps fire in the blood. I think that's what keeps us. I know it helps keeps me going. When you guys hop on here and ask these questions or make really nice comments, it, it really helps me get through to the next video. Honestly, it really does, guys. I mean, because there's sometimes no one gets on here or no one shares or whatever and it, it makes doing the next video or two tougher so when you guys really come on here and really uh, partake in what i do it really pushes you to the next project it really does because it's tough you know holding a full-time crazy job i got a professional art job that i do and then you know i'm I'm doing videos still. I'm doing toy restorations, and I'm still going to different co uh, collectors and stuff, uh, doing stuff for Battlegrounds. So it's, I never slow down. That's why I'm up 4 a.m., and I go until I drop at night. So, I mean, it, it's a crazy lifestyle. So having a support mechanism like you guys really makes all the difference, and I, and I definitely want to let you guys know that because, like I said, I ain't going to have like This has been a tough year for everybody. I know. I even contemplated on dropping my YouTube channel. I know that sounds crazy, but it, it crossed my mind a couple times. I've been fighting to get to this stupid 1,000 subs, and and honestly, I, I honestly thought I should have been there a long time ago. I mean, I thought when the Bantha come out, and when I thought when people would see me sculpting the Bantha, and especially when I got the Bantha completely sculpted. Honestly, I really, because he goes, uh, here was my crazy thing. I'm a numbers guy. I got to crunch the numbers. Uh, I think when me and Michael did that video on when I got done with it, I think we, it, at that time, within, within a few days, I think if you go back and look at Michael's video that we did, 10,000 views within three or four days of the, me with the completed Bantha. And I think I only got 325 to 350 new subs. So I was, to me, I, I was really depressed. I thought, was well, these Star Wars guys not like what I did? Do they, I mean, I mean, cause to me, I thought, man, 10,000 views, man, if I just get 10% subs out of this, man, I'll be rocking and rolling. 
<laughs> didn't get nowhere near it. And I've been fighting well over a year and still not got there. So it's just like, what else do I got to do? What else do I got to sculpt? What else do I, what kind of video do I got to make? Do I, and, you know, I think even one of you guys even said, hey, you need to uh, only talk about Star Wars every day for six months. And I'm like, oh, dang it. God, I love Star Wars. OK, duh. I, I love Star Wars. But I, I like Motu. I like G.I. Joe. I mean, I like Thundar. I like Dungeons and Dragons. You know, what I mean, uh, multifaceted, you know, love of different art forms, you know, love Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I like a lot of cool stuff. And I mean. For me to try to settle on just Star Wars, somewhere down the line, I'd get sick of talking about Star Wars. <laughs> I just would. I see you guys. A lot of people popping on here. Let's see here. Totally understand. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not the only one out here. YouTube is a grind. Matt Hall. Hey, brother. How you doing, brother? Don't stop. If you stop, it never happens. Exactly. And, and you, you know, I'm glad, uh, Aaron, I'm glad you said that YouTube algorithms. And, and that's where I'm at right now, guys. That's why I talk about trying to get these 1000 subscribers until I hit that 1000 marker. The YouTube algorithms are not going to work for me. That they're, they're totally set up to, I can't monetize until I hit a thousand and they don't algorithms don't work with you if you're not monetized. So YouTube is this me dumping a video on it. So any kind of sharing or any kind of advertising, it comes from you guys and comes from me advertising on fake Facebook. So when you guys copy and paste on your Facebook, these videos, that's what's keeping this uh, channel alive is you guys and what little bit I advertise. And sometimes I'll advertise. If I do a star war, I'll dump it on four or five other Facebooks of star Wars and I'll let it go. Cause I try not to think about it. So, ah, thank you, uh, Blue Harvest. See, I'm driving, but tuned in. <laughs> Just be safe, brother. Be safe. I have not. You know, I have not set up no Instagram. How many times you ask me? <laughs> you know, I'm too. I've just been way too busy, brother. I have not got to that as usual. I, like I said, I've been working in here. Like I said, I'm doing a uh, working on a TV pilot right now. That's pretty much killing me. Uh, like I said, redoing this room, it, I spent really, guys, off and on all last week. I even had family over for a pre-Thanksgiving dinner Saturday, and I worked all the way through it. I stopped and ate, and luckily some of the family members seen what I was trying to do. They came in and helped, and that was, oh, man, with that armoire. I couldn't move it by myself. Even after I emptied out, it was too heavy to drag by itself. So luckily I had some other muscle come in with that. And that's when it really within one hour, it was, I was able to, you know, how it is guys, when you're working in your room, when you get the big pieces move, then you can really hit it and, and work things out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Blue harvest is on. Okay. You're on Twitter as well. Okay. I'm going to definitely have to hit you guys up on Twitter. Cause I do have a Twitter account. So, so I definitely have to find blue Har guys in blue harvest here. Uh, uh, Love these guys. I love what these guys do over there in the, uh, the UK. Uh, a few weeks ago, they guys gave me this amazing plug that I just did not deserve. You guys really said a lot of nice things about me, and I'm just humbly grateful for everything you guys said. I love you guys' channel. You and uh, Usual Mike, he's another guy I love over there in Australia. Just this, he, Bottom line, if you need to know something about Star Wars, hop on Usual Mike. If, if he don't know it, it probably ain't going on. I mean, that guy lives and breathes anything star wars that's happening and everything and uh, i have been uh speaking about what's going on in star wars uh keeping up with the mandalorian i, I have not been able to watch them on a friday it's, it's been i've been having to watch them on a saturday and sunday because like i said everything's been going on i've been working football fridays uh, this friday night i'm gonna be live on tv again doing the doing the uh, football finals and stuff so I've been, my Friday nights has been kind of taken up. So I come home, eat, take a nap, run to the TV station. I don't get home after one o'clock. So my Fridays are pretty crazy and everything. So been doing that. And so, so but I've been keeping up with the Mandalorian. I think that is the best thing that uh, Disney has done with Star Wars in the bottom line. And to keep it simple, it's all about uh, uh, John Favreau. And I can't remember the other, you know, the other guy come from the clone wars and stuff 
Kenny Filoni. Yeah, Dave Filoni. That's it. Uh, for one reason, that, that's a hard name to remember. But bottom line, you got two guys who know how to write a good story. And this, like, you know, me and Rob always talk about when you're, whether it's a comic book, cartoon, or TV show, it all falls back to the story. And bottom line, if you don't put a good solid story in there, it don't matter what kind of artwork, it don't matter what kind of 4K special effects, if you don't have a good solid story, it will fall apart and you will lose your audience, bottom line. Let's see here. Oh, you taught Mike all he knows. Awesome. Yeah, we talk Mando every Friday night. Well, guys, like I said, I'll be busy this Friday night, so I'll, uh, so I'll try to make sure I catch you guys because I, I try. I know there's a huge time difference. So I think you guys Friday night is my Friday afternoon. I think I can't remember, so I had to had to check on that one. Everything because I know when I used to talk to Chris Smith there on a regular basis. It'd be morning time. Yeah, I think it's that's what it is. It's 12 hours flip-flop difference because when I was talking to him early in the morning, it was his evening. I think that's how it goes, if I'm not mistaken. So if it's 8 o'clock at night, so it might even be Thursday night. So yeah, it might be even be Thursday morning is your off Friday night. I don't know. It, I had to look at a dang calendar on that. That's hard. It's going to drive me crazy. 8 p.m. is 3 p.m. Eastern. Okay. All right. All right. So it'll be three o'clock. So that'd be tough, but I think I can probably make it. So I have to try to chime in on my phone because a lot of times I still worked about three thirty. So I might have to sneak and turn you guys on the cell phone. <laughs> they should have done. We, and here I said this years ago. I'm glad you mentioned that, Aaron. Honestly, I think back in the day in the '90s and stuff when Star Trek started coming out with, you know, the Babylon, uh, was it early 2000s or whatever it was, all the Babylon 5s, the Enterprise, and all those different things, it worked. It The Star Trek grew beyond any whatever they thought. Right then and there, that's, instead of coming out with all these uh, new movies, and when they come out, I think, what was it, when they done the uh, special edition Star Wars, what they should have done is, Put those out. That was fine. You know, I didn't care much for the, all the new special effects, but it was what it was. But I think instead of jumping in back into the movies with the episode one, I think they should have jumped into the TV series. I think that would have been a much better route because these little small, because if they do it right, they should come out with like three or four different shows and let them overlap each other as soon as one is done they start the other one however many shows they need four or five and make sure they all got stormtroopers and, and the overlapping characters to where you can constantly see something a new episode of something star wars all year round and these toys could stay on the shelf because you got the excuse to keep them on the shelf instead of doing a movie and you pump these figures out a low volume for three months and boom Nobody can find them if they don't show up at your Walmart or whatever. That's just it, that's the most annoying thing with Star Wars right now. You can't find the crap. Awesome, awesome. So and, and that's where I'm at. Like I said, I love Star Wars, but I just don't like how you go to your Star Wars, your Walmarts, your Targets, and you just can't find the stuff. That is to me just I'm beyond annoyed with it. I mean, it's, you know, and He-Man's not annoying me too much, but around, I guess, in the southeast, well, North Georgia is where I'm at, we're just getting our stuff extremely late versus everybody else. It, it, it don't matter if it's Mego, Motu, or Star Wars, we're like two to three months behind everybody else. So, I already see everybody, on, a lot of people on YouTube that has all of way two Motu stuff. And my, my stores just a couple weeks ago finally got stocked up on Wave 1. They came out with them, and they all sold out. They come out again, they all sold out. And now they're packed out to the gills, and they're not moving. So, annoying. Let's see here. You can't find... Well, like I said, I got a good friend of mine, uh, David Chandler. He's up there in Benton, Kentucky, and he can't find Wave 2 either. So, like I said, I think anything below Ohio, <laughs> we're screwed down this way. So, I don't know what the deal is. 
And, and like I said, if you pre-order this stuff through Walmart, Target sucks pre-order. You better not be a vintage mint on card collector because if you don't, you better plan on opening it because they're going to ship it and they're going to beat it up before you get it, unfortunately. I mean, I've got videos on it. I've seen tons and tons of people with videos on the net with uh, bad Walmart experience with the Mo2 and the Ghostbuster stuff. I mean, they don't care, guys. They're, they're just flipping product, flipping product. They ain't, they have zero concerns for collectors. So so my best bet, if you're not a mint on card, you're, you're, you're gold. You're good. If, but if you are, you're going to get screwed probably. <laughs> I mean, because they either they jam it in a box or they put it in a box this big and they let it bounce around like a ping pong in there. I got a cool video on that one, too. Target really ticked me off and everything. Well, guys, I've been here over 50 minutes. Thank you all for joining me. I'm getting ready to get some supper in here. I got to uh, do a little work. Yeah, I think my wife's got some Christmas projects. You know, it's that time of year. We got to start getting set up for it. We got to four-year-old and like i said i finally got her set up in here that's uh totally exciting me to have her because that's my little buddy she wants to come in here and and luckily believe it or not guys she's four years old and she don't she don't mess with my stuff now she'll rag out the art desk but she don't mess with the figure so she's daddy's training her right so guys appreciate y'all you guys have a good evening and everything be safe out there keep collecting have fun with it treat everybody good catch you guys later i'm toy smuggler Cheers, Blue Harvest. Thank you, brother. Thank you for joining me, man.